Hey everybody, it's Joe from Papa Jobo. Today we're going to be doing a review on John Wick 4, or is it John Woke? No, there's there's no wokeness in it. I can't detect any, didn't find any. If you found any, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll read it and consider it. But I found absolutely no wokeness in this film, which immediately makes it a 10 out of 10, right? Well, it may not be woke in this film, but we're going to talk about the future of this franchise and where it might be heading. Um, but let's get into the review. So... The first thing you have to do when you go into John Wick is you have to suspend all disbelief because if you don't, you're going to end up like me and people like me who aren't able to fully do that in a lot of films and you're going to find problems with the film. I'm going to go through some of those that uh, some of the things I just I didn't like. Um, first of all, there's apparently no cops in the John Wick universe. Um, they don't show up to anything. You can be riding around the Arc de Triomphe for 10 minutes just murdering people and apparently the authorities just don't exist. Um, there's also this dance scene where John Wick is fighting against um, uh, a Russian villain. I forgot his name. And he he ends up uh, shooting his gun around dancers. There's thousands of them just shooting his gun around. And none of them, none of them run. They'll just, they just have to dance. We got to keep the dance going no matter what. Um, it's, it's strange. It's weird. And it, it really kind of looked like an actual video game. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in some of these scenes. Um, there's also, uh, well, those two things weren't big enough to drop the film down for me all that much. I maybe gave it a 0.5 drop out of 10, you know, so it's down to a 9.5 for me because I really enjoyed a lot of things about this movie. The, the next thing though, that didn't make much sense to me was the Marquis de Gramont, um, played by Bill, Bill Skarsgård, which he did a wonderful job. I genuinely loved it, uh, his performance, but his character was almost pointless. The only reason he was in it was to have a duel so that John could get out from under the high table. Um, I guess that's a decent plot point, but his character and, and John's character just had no real reason to, to, to hate each other, to, to have this like deep, meaningful fight that you wanted to have between you know an end boss. Um, they should have probably followed the connection with uh, Akira, the daughter of the, um, I think her name's Akira, the daughter of the um, uh, Japanese uh, uh, hotel manager, hotel manager. Um, her story was actually cool. There's a lot behind it. She watches her father die. She kind of blames John Wick a little bit. I thought they were going to go off in that direction and have some fun with it, but they ended up just completely dropping it. And then at the very end of the film, um, I'm going to give you spoilers here. I forgot to announce that, but there's going to be lots of spoilers here. I'm going to tell you how it ends. At the very end of the film, and I mean the very end, after the credits, they show her walking up to Kane, getting ready to kill him, and um, then they cut away, which, again, you're going to want to stick around for where I think this franchise is going because I don't think it's going to a good place. But, again, that wasn't something that brought the, brought the score down for me. It was just kind of an annoyance. But I will tell you this. There is one scene in this film that I hate that brought the score down for me and was absolutely moronically stupid. And it was the um, switchboard operator turning into a DJ and narrating step by step what was happening with John Wick. This creates huge plot holes and I couldn't stand the cringe of it every time they would cut away to her. It was just stupid. But here's the plot hole it creates. If they have that sort of intelligence that can follow John Wick around and report back instantly to this DJ telling her exactly what's happening. Why couldn't you just put one of the great assassins of this guild out there and just shoot him in the head from 300 yards away with a sniper rifle? It creates a huge plot hole. And it's clear that they weren't really thinking when they did this. They were just trying to stylize this, make it uh, more hip, I guess. But it turns out just being a horrible, horrible scene. And I hated it. Genuinely, hated it and it brought the score down a bit for me but the the biggest issue um that i have with this film is that they end uh john wick three with him going to kill the high table and then they decide not to follow that storyline the first 15 minutes you think he's going to do it and then they just change direction change course and it turns into um something that i didn't i wasn't interested in i wasn't vested in this i wanted to see him go after the high table there's a reason this happened though um i would say it makes no sense but i'll tell you exactly why they did it this is where john wick may actually turn into 
something woke. It has the potential to do that. They kept the high table in play for one reason. They're going to hand this franchise off to uh, a movie called A Ballerina, where you got a 120-pound sopping wet girl going to be beating the crap out of guys three or four times bigger than her, and she's going to take the reins. At least I believe she's going to take the reins from John Wick. He's going to hand them to her, a la every Disney film out there. Now, I know Disney has nothing to do with this, but I'm telling you, that's where it looks like this is headed for me. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll eat crow and I'll tell you, but I'm telling you, wokeness isn't gone. It's not going away, and I don't necessarily think we're winning. I think that's exactly where this is going to go, especially with the last credit scene where the last scene after the credits where you see Akira going to kill Kane. That's a storyline I might actually be interested in. Watching her fight was pretty cool. She got shot. She got thrown around a little. It was more realistic. If they're going to follow that storyline with Ballerina and have her just being um, a bad A with guns, okay, that might make sense. But I'm going to tell you right now, even if it is and there's no real wokeness in it, it's going to bomb. People don't want to watch that. They want to watch John Wick. So those are my complaints about the film. They bring them down um, a little bit for me, probably to a 7 out of 10. But let's get to the good stuff. I mean, the cinematography in this is some of the most beautiful cinematography I've seen in any film. It's absolutely gorgeous. From the backdrops to the costumes to um, the, the scenery to the special effects, it's gorgeous. It's a 10 out of 10. It's just absolutely mind-numbingly beautiful. The choreography is obviously great. The fight scenes are fun. Um, there is one fight scene that goes on a tad too long, and that's the stair scene. As he was rolling down the stairs, I, you know, under my breath in the theater went, as you wish, you know. <laughs> if you know anything about movies, you'll know what I'm talking about there. But it was still a cool scene. I enjoyed it. Um, Keanu Reeves is always really fun to watch. Um, he seems like a good guy. I don't know him. I, neither do you guys, but he seems like a class act. I like him. And, and unless and until he does something that tells me otherwise, I'm going to always support him in most of his films. Although he has done a couple woke films, which is kind of, I don't know, iffy. But um, the characters are fun. I really enjoyed um, Kane a lot. His storyline is really good. It's John Wick 2, though. I mean, that's the same thing that happened in John Wick 2, but it's still really compelling. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And watching the actor that played him, I think it was Johnny Yee or something like that, he ends up just kind of stealing the show in a lot of places where he's just a complete bad A with his sword. And it's always nice to see somebody take a, um, a movie or a show from, you know, back in the day in Japan, there's a show called The Blind Swordsman, and he's taking a spin off of that. And... Um, they really make him shine with it. Um, I loved his story arc. I think it's great. I wish uh, that the last credit scene would, would have shown us more what's going to happen there and if he's going to be involved with the next next uh, spinoff of this franchise. The fight scenes are great. I mean, they're beautiful. They're fun. From the opening scene where he's chasing people on, on camels or horses and shoots them to one of the most beautiful scenes I have ever seen that makes this whole show worth it for me i mean 10 out of 10 doesn't describe it it's obviously what everyone's talking about the scene where they do the crane shot above uh, uh the abandoned french chateau and from room to room you get to watch john wick with a genesis 12 shotgun firing off super dragon breath rounds at people it's gorgeous it's one of the best scenes I have ever seen. And for gunfight scenes, it, it really is the best. It ranks up there with the good, the bad, the ugly. It ranks up there with Children of Men, that big unkept five to seven minute scene where, you know, there's a bunch of bullets going off. It ranks right up there with those. And for me, just coming out of the theater, super stoked to see it. It ranks number one right now. It was gorgeous. You can't beat that. I've never seen it before. And when you can come out of a film and say, I've never seen that before. And it's something you like, by the way, not woke garbage then you know that it's a good film. Yeah, I had my complaints about it. Um, is it a little too long? Maybe. I usually don't have a problem with long films as long as they keep me engaged. But by about the, t I don't know, the 2, 215 mark, I actually was like, what time is it? Which tells me they were losing me a little bit. But um, I think it ended um, poorly. I didn't like the ending, actually, killing off your main character. Is he dead, though? No, he's not dead. So... I don't know. It, it, it's kind of a conflicting scene. If he's really dead and they decide not to make a five, like if the movie doesn't do as well as they want, they won't make a five. Or if they decide to go off in woke directions with little girls beating the crap out of men, you know, 10 times their size, then um, yeah, he's dead. Um, did I like that? If he's really dead, I don't. That's just me. If you watch my channel, you know I like to see happy endings. Uh, this, this wasn't one. Um, 
But um, some people will say, you know, he made it to heaven. He fought through hell to get to heaven. And that was kind of the allegory here, I guess. I don't know. I thought that maybe you could find a different storyline with John where he finds some happiness, maybe with the, the daughter of his, his slain friend. But um, overall, I would give this film, uh, because of how cool the fight scenes are, a, a solid 7 out of 10, maybe a shaky 8 out of 10. I know I'm not going to make some of you happy with that. Some of you are saying it's perfect. But if you if you can suspend your disbelief, you're going to think it's a perfect film. If you can't, like me and others like me, then you're going to find some problems with it. Is it a film I'd watch again for that one Dragon's Breath scene? Absolutely. For the opening scene? Yeah. And I really enjoyed the scene in the uh, Japanese hotel. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the whole thing was done beautifully. I thought that's where the cinematography really shined well that in the dragon's breath scene obviously but overall um like i said solid seven out of ten shaky eight out of ten is it worth seeing absolutely go see it because guess what guess what there isn't an ounce not one single ounce of wokeness in this it's it's for that alone you should go see it just support films like this so that we can actually start winning the fight now um i'm going to talk in another video about how i don't really think we're winning that fight but when these films come out and you want to support this cause Go support them. I fully recommend it. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching. Peace.